Okay, so now I think we're going to work on the lighting and then a few of the render settings so we can get a good idea of what the final image is going to look like and then we can adjust the materials later on because the materials, we can't really see the materials if everything's all black. We kind of have, need to have some lighting first before we can do anything. So I'm going to add some lighting and then we can adjust a few settings to make it as realistic as possible and then we can move ahead with the materials. So what I'm going to do over here is go to the world tab and make sure we have a world. If you don't, then you might need to cl click a new one and it basically looks like this. And just like the materials tab, if you click on an object and give it a new material, it's gonna give you a brief overview of what you can see, uh, but it's a lot easier to change it in the shader editor. So let's go to the shader editor. And we're not working on the object, we want to work on the world. That is basically the world lighting. So if I go to render preview here, I can change this to pink, blue, make it brighter. Uh, but, but this isn't very realistic. Most of the time, you can use something called a HDRI or a sky texture. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of both. So a HDRI will look something like this. You'll see that it has, a, it has some very strange lighting. So the sun looks incredibly blown out and the rest of the areas look fine. But in some other ones, it's quite a very strange image. It's a 360 image, but the lighting looks very strange. And that's because this image has a hell of a lot of information stuck inside of it. So this is called a HDR image, or it could be a .exr, and they are very, very detailed images with a lot of light information. And Blender can use that light information to light a scene. Now, a normal JPEG will not work because that information is not in the image. So this sun value should be very, very high, and this dark value should be very, very low. But with a JPEG, it's kind of baked into the image this final look that the light values are not included so this won't work to light the image so we can use a hdri so if i go back to blender and i just go shift a and i search for environment texture and then i load that in i can then choose which one i want and blender will be able to use that quite nicely so if i select this one for example and then i plug that into the background node we can see immediately the lighting looks way more realistic. So it looks like we're inside this world. The, the world is being lit by this. So if we want to rotate this, this is facing the wrong way. We can click over here, do shift A, search and type in mapping node. Plug that into here. And we can see it's disappeared because we want one more node, shift A and type in texture coordinate node. Now these two are going to be, these three are going to be ones you're using all the time. So it's good to know that these exist. And we're going to type in generate, plug the generated into here and we can get that back. Because that's basically, that's basically saying that the world is generating some space that the, this texture can sit on top of. And this mapping node will tell it you can rotate, you're able to then rotate it all over the place or move it around, which isn't very useful because it's a 360 image. So you don't really want to move this because it can get very confusing. Uh, but we do want to rotate it on the Z axis. We can rotate it on these axis as well, but we're going to map a new direction. So we can press circle on the number pad and we can rotate this around. We could do something like this. Right, like that. Now that this is here, one thing to note is like I said, like I mentioned before, because this is a very, very high detail image, Blender knows how to deal with the incredibly light values and the incredibly dark values of like these areas, for example. So if I bring this strength down very, very slightly, you can see that the sun is still gonna be nicely visible in this scene and while the edge gets dark. So it's almost like it's becoming nighttime, which is far more accurate than a JPEG could ever do. So let's just bring this back to one. Uh, but as this is a HDRI, the sun for me is too low. So I want the sun to be a little bit higher. So you can rotate this if you wanted to, but then it's, things are gonna start getting very unrealistic because the horizon is now risen as well. So, you, so HDRIs are great a lot of the time and I use them for probably 90% of all my renders, but there is something which is a lot more flexible inside a blender, which for artistic purposes can be very useful. And that's called a shift A, and then we can just do a texture. We can click sky texture. So let's plug that into here. And this is basically a very highly accurate model created by Blender. I think there's a, there was a paper written on it on why this is a very accurate sun model. So we can adjust everything about it. So let's turn this down to 0 0.1 so we can actually see the sun. And the sun is over there. We can increase the sun size if we wanted to. We can also change the elevation. So as the sun goes down, it's gonna get more and more and more like a sunset. And we can also bring that up to be midday. 
and we can also rotate it. We can uh, change the ro sun rotation, basically the time. We can change the altitude, so we can change something like 5,000. And we can see all the values are going to be changing based on the elevation and everything like that. So I'm going to choose these settings here, which you can play to find something that you think works. But I do think that these values work for me. Uh, so let's just do this, 0.4, let's do 0.5, and elevation 31 to move the sun up a bit more. And we could rotate this to be, I think it was something like, like this. We might actually change this a little bit later on. I think that I do want some more lighting coming in here, but this will probably be fine for now. Let's maybe move this back a little bit more. And then I think the altitude was something like 5,000. And this is this doesn't need to be 100% accurate. You can really you can really be as flexible as you like. So let's just bring this out like that. So for some reason that is what I end up with. Right then, so this is some lighting that we can start to work with, but you'll start to see that the image is very, very noisy. So what's happening over here is if we go to the render settings and we have something like this. So I wanna first make sure that you are set this to cycles. I'm gonna set this to GPU so it's faster. And now you'll see that the scene is still very noisy. So that's saying, I believe that this is going to 10% noise, so it will render the image for as long as possible until it believes that the noise level is 10% away from being 100% noise free. And if I do it like this, it's still too noisy for me. So sometimes I set this to 0 0.01, so I want it to be 1% away from being totally noise free. You can see the, val the samples are rising and rising and rising and rising, and it will get to the peak value, the maximum amount of samples of 1028, and that looks a lot cleaner than when it was 0.1. So if I set it like that, it's too noisy for me, so I'm going to set this to 0.01, and it will just rise and rise and rise. If you have a slow GPU, it might take a long time for it to get to that value, so it might then be ideal for you to use a higher value like 0.05 or 0.1. But for my GPU, this is fine. And if you're doing lots and lots of changes, maybe that's a too high value. So let's just choose this 128. So it will it will render that until it gets to 128 samples or maybe 256. Basically, it doesn't need to be uh, square values, but I'm just used to doing square values, but you can do 300 if you wanted to. I believe that the denoiser does a better job at denoising when there is a square values way. So let's just set that to whatever you want uh, and at whatever speed you think is fine. If it takes about this amount of time to get to 300, I think that's kind of fine for it. So next thing you want to do is add a denoiser. So you'll see there is some noise going on, but we can clean that up very quickly by enabling a denoiser. Now I have found my computer is slower at rendering when the denoise is enabled, so I'm going to tell it I want this to start denoising at maybe a value of 150. So it will climb the samples until it gets 150 and then it will denoise. So you'll be able to get a very clean image very quickly. And the de there's different denoise settings. Um, so this will be using, I believe it's using Optics, which is a pretty fast renderer, but it's not as accurate. So I quite like using Open Image Denoise, Albedo and Normal and Accurate. Uh, but if yours is quite slow, then uh, you can choose another one. You can see it's actually open image denoise, slows it quite a lot. Maybe I stick with optics, it gets 150, denoises, yeah, okay. Let's just stick with optics, that seems to do a pretty good job. So if I go into camera view, we can zoom into any area, and now this area is going to be nice and smooth and clean. There we go. So now look, that looks close to the final image. Right then, the next thing I want to do is go down to light paths, and these values work most of the time, but I do find for my work in particular, I like it to be as high value as possible because I like to, I like for my customers to get as much detail as possible. The level of detail difference isn't very much and it's not 100% necessary, but it's just what I've got used to. So I'm going to select all of them. You could just click and drag. I'm just going to type 32 and that will mean there's a lot more light bounces. I'm not going to go over all of these right now. The next thing is clamping, so that's basically saying if there's going to be a super high value, like at one point it's just very, very, very bright, it's just going to cancel that bright bit out. But in real life as well, as I want this to be a very realistic render, in real life you don't have these values. If there's a, very, if there's a point which is very, very, very bright, it will be very, very bright. So I'm going to just turn that off. But there are certain situations in which that is important um, and you might find that your scene does have a lot of very very bright sparkly bits all over the place in which case it might be important to use that but I don't think it's going to be important for us for this particular project. Right then and the next thing we want to do is just go down to color management and set this to AGX and then we're going to go to look and I'm going to set this to high contrast 
and that's going to be the look which I'm going to be working with. So I think that looks pretty good and I think we can start now working on some materials. 